Hello friends. Today in this session, we will discuss balanced mix design for a bituminous layer. This is an upcoming topic which is being tried in several countries. What is BMD? What is balanced mix design? ASTO PP10520 defines a balanced mix design as asphalt mix design using performance test on appropriately conditioned specimens that address multiple modes of distress taking into consideration mix design, mix aging, traffic, climate and location within the payment structure. So in nutshell, balanced mix design is one which will address all three modes of failure, rutting, cracking and durability. So why it is required? Why balanced mix design is needed? It is needed number one to ensure performance and there are several concerns about durability and cracking of asphalt payments and many researchers have pointed out the shortcomings and limitations of presently used volumetric mix design system either Marshall or SuperPay. The balanced mix design is a new approach to asphalt mix design and production accept acceptance that will ensure the performance in the field. Second, to enable innovations. This BMD will enable asphalt making companies to innovate the manufacturing process and also revise the specifications to better ensure the needed field performance of a mixture. And the third one is economic optimization. Balanced mix design allows for the optimization of mixes in terms of cost effective material use and performance. Without knowing the true performance of mixes, decisions on material use will likely be made based on assumptions, past experience or current specifications, limits and constraints. A total picture will emerge only when you know how a mix will perform in the field. And there are four approaches of balanced mix design. Approach A requires full compliance with the existing volumetric requirements and additional performance requirements and therefore it is the most conservative approach and has the lowest innovation potential. Approach B requires full compliance with the existing volumetric requirements at the preliminary OBC that is optimum binder content but it allows moderate changes in asphalt binder content for performance optimization based on mixture performance test results. Approach C allows some of the volumetric requirements to be relaxed or completely eliminated as long as the performance criteria are satisfied. It is less conservative than approach A and approach B and it provides a medium degree of innovation potential. And approach D has no requirement on volumetric properties and it completely relies on mixture performance test results for mix design optimization and therefore it is considered the least conservative approach with highest degree of innovation potential. And I will explain each of these approaches, the stepwise procedure which is used in each of these four approaches. Approach A. Now this approach starts with the current volumetric mix design method. It can be Marshall method of mix design or it can be super paid. So we determine the aggregate condition and optimum binder content for a given thickness or a given layer. Now if it meets, if it meets the existing volumetric properties, then we go for the next step. If your mix does not meet volumetric requirements, then you redesign the mix either by changing the gradation or by changing the asphalt or by changing both. Even material also can be changed. Now once you get a mix which meets the requirement of volumetric properties then we test this mixture for rutting and cracking at optimum binder content. Now if this mix does not meet the requirement of rutting and cracking then we again go to the first step we repeat the design of the mix and change the gradation or binder 
or both and come to a stage when the mix will meet the requirement of cracking and rutting. Once the mix meets the requirement of cracking and rutting, then we conduct moisture damage test at optimum binder content. There can be two situations again, either it meets the requirement or it does not meet the requirement. If it does not meet the requirement, then you add anticipic agent, it can be liquid anticipic agent, it can be lime or it can be any other material which can improve the moisture damage of the mix, moisture susceptibility of the mix. Once it meets the moisture damage requirement, then that is your job mix formula for production. So this is the approach A. Approach B is an expanded version of approach 1. It also starts with the current volumetric mix design method that is SuperPave, Marshall or Veeam for determining a preliminary optimum binder content. And this optimum binder content should meet all the existing volumetric requirements. The mix is then tested with selected mixture rutting and cracking test at preliminary optimum binder content and two or more additional binder content at interval of plus minus 0.3 to 0.5 percent of the OBC. So finally, we will not select OBC. We will select a binder content which will meet the requirement of cracking and rutting. Now, a binder content, not necessarily the lowest, that satisfy both the rutting and cracking test criteria is selected as the final optimum binder content. Once this is done, then you conduct the moisture damage test at final OBC. If it meets the requirement, that is your final JMF. If it does not meet the requirement, you again add some entry stripping material, either liquid or lime or any other material, conduct moisture damage test again and reach to the satisfaction. And that is your job mix formula for production. Approach C it starts with the current volumetric mix design method to establish only the initial gradation and initial binder content. It is not the optimum binder content and it is not the final gradation also. Now at this final, at this gradation and this binder content, we conduct rutting and cracking test. Now this PB is passing binder content. It can be a single, it can be multiple. In the, in the step of 0.3 or 0.5 percent binder content. Now, we do not determine the volumetric properties here. We directly go for rutting and cracking test. If this mixture does not satisfy the criteria of rutting and cracking, then we adjust PB or use different mix component, that is gradation of the aggregate. If it meets the requirement, then you select the OBC and mix proportion at this stage. That is your gradation and OBC are selected. Then at this OBC and at this component proportions, we conduct moisture damage test at final OBC. Again, if it satisfy, it finds, it gives you JMF. If it does not satisfy, then you go for some anti-stripping agent conduct this test again and reach to this stage. And once you get your mix formula, you measure the volumetric properties which are required for field quality control test. Approach D is that you select initial grid, aggregate gradation and binder and conduct rutting and cracking test at three or more binder content. These are called passing binder content. Now here binder content is also not decided and, and again you, you find out whether the cracking and rutting requirements are met or not. If it is not met, then use different mix component or proportions and repeat rutting and cracking test and finally you select the OBC and mix component proportions and at this OBC and this component 
proportions you conduct moisture damage test these steps are same as earlier in approach c or d and finally you establish a job mix formula for production and once you do it then measure required volumetric properties so these are four approaches which are given in esto to design a balanced mix now rutting test can be any test which is applicable in your country it can be asphalt pavement analyzer it can be high temperature indirect tension test on a cylind on a marshal specimen or it can be a flow number test on a cylindrical specimen it can be hamburg wheel tracking test also to determine rutting in a pavement in a mixture or it can be rapid shear rutting test so it all depends upon the country specifications and the test equipment available in your laboratory similarly cracking test can be either flexural fatigue beam test or it can be overlay test it can also be direct tensile it can also be direct tensile cyclic fatigue test or indirect tensile asphalt cracking test these are the tests which are used in different countries but choice of the test will depend the availability of the equipment and specifications available in the country moisture damage test can be either through hamburg wheel tracking test or it can be tensile strength ratio also this is the most popular test tensile strength ratio you will determine its of conditioned and unconditioned specimen i have a separate video on determination of tsr of bitmas mixes now this is the graph which shows you a binder content window with adequate rutting and cracking resistance in the mix now green line here shows how rut depth changes with binder content in a mixture and red line here shows how the cracking changes or you can say fatigue life of the mix changes with the binder content now let us say this is the criteria for rutting and that is the criteria for cracking or fatigue now this is the requirement of binder content for acceptable cracking and this is the requirement of binder content for acceptable rutting so this is the binder content window which is shown yellow here which will satisfy both the requirements rutting and cracking now performance test method which method should be used now two important factor that should be considered when selecting mixture performance test for balanced mix design are the complexity of test method and the cost of the test equipment mixture performance test requiring expensive equipment tedious specific tedious sample preparation long testing time and complicated data analysis may not be appropriate for use in quality control and acceptance testing because of lack of practicality on the other hand mixture performance test that are simple quick repeatable and robust are preferred because they can be implemented for mix design and production testing to ensure balanced rutting and cracking resistance of both laboratory produced and plant produced mixes now when it comes to when it comes to deciding the performance test criteria the simple question which should be asked is are you satisfied with the current pavement performance in the state in your country if the answer to this question is yes then the preliminary performance criteria should be selected so that they can pass most of the existing mixed designs but fail those with known quality issues if the answer to this question is no then criteria should be set at a higher level with this expectation that the overall mix quality and payment performance will be improved after execution of a balanced mix design in the field so nationwide benchmarking experiment is recommended 
to help establish appropriate mixed performance test criteria and that is the main task what criteria should be made for rutting for cracking and for durability so thank you very much for watching this video i hope you liked it you can post your comment in the comment box